Thank you for watching this ag forecast for the southern U.S. I'm Andrew Pritchard, senior meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, checking out the satellite picture, a pretty cloudy start for a lot of folks across the north or across the south this morning. A lot of fog across parts of eastern Texas through Louisiana and Arkansas, Mississippi, western portions of Kentucky and Tennessee, even northern portions of Alabama and Georgia waking up to some fog this morning with some moisture uh, left behind by Tropical Storm Beta as it moves on across the, the mid-Atlantic and then off across the Atlantic Ocean later tonight into tomorrow. Some sunny skies to be found across Florida, some isolated thunderstorms popping up in that area, and then western portions of the south here across uh, the remainder of Texas and Oklahoma should see some sunshine on this Friday morning as well. Now, as we look at the radar picture here again, early on Friday morning, some scattered storms all the way down toward the, uh, the panhandle of Florida through Georgia with more widespread rain and thunderstorms across the Carolinas, parts of the eastern uh, mid-south there, Kentucky and Tennessee lifting into uh, Virginia as well. Now, as we look at the last seven days of precipitation, much of this falling from tropical storm beta as it meandered around across the south over the last several days. Pretty dry otherwise from the panhandles all the way through the Midwest into the Northeast with synoptically uh, what's been a very dry pattern with our jet stream. Of course, the, the Gulf of Mexico and tropical storm activity has been the wild card in our precipitation as we talk about the lower 48. Now, as we look at the jet stream, the upper level pattern, we're going to be undergoing a big change as we head into next week. We're watching now a core of very strong jet stream winds, a jet extension across the Pacific that's pushing into the Pacific Northwest, bringing some rainfall to that region, badly needed at this point. Uh, we're going to see several waves making their way through the region, digging down, uh, eventually leading to a highly amplified pattern uh, that goes all the way from a trough across the, the uh, Aleutian Islands. We've got a ridge over the western U.S., and now we've got another trough digging in across the Great Lakes into the central U.S. and bringing some cool air down into the south. This is a pattern, again, that's going to force warmth back up across the west coast, reigniting fire weather risk across Pacific uh, Northwest into uh, northern California, and then, of course, bringing some cool air back into the region, back into the, uh, the central U.S. early this weekend, and then making its way on into the south as we get into next week. This is going to bring another strip of precipitation from parts of Kansas and Oklahoma eastward into the Midwest and additional rainfall possible across the south, especially as we get into mid to late next week as this uh, major wave kind of cuts off or on Wednesday. We'll take a look at that here with the uh, 500 millibar height and wind speeds plot. And again, uh, otherwise a, a dry and a quiet pattern across the, the central and southern U.S. right now. It's going to be interrupted as we head into the end of the weekend. We've got a couple of waves initially that are going to bring a thunderstorm risk to parts of the upper Midwest. You see one wave right there bringing a threat for some strong storms to the state of Wisconsin as we head through this afternoon and evening. Another wave brings a renewed chance for some strong storms to the upper Midwest tomorrow. It's this one that comes digging in here Sunday night into Monday that now the European model wants to kind of cut off, similar to what we saw across the western U.S. about two weeks ago. We're seeing this wave that comes down here Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday getting uh, potentially cut off briefly by the Pacific jet stream uh, the, or the, uh, the polar jet off to the north, uh, potentially meandering around across the south then as we get into the middle part of the next week. Now, this would lead to uh, cloudy, cool, dreary conditions across the south, so a very unpleasant week on tap across much of the southern U.S., now, the, the European model wants to pick this wave back up as we get into Thursday and Friday and lift it out of here. That's a question mark. That's a, a wild card that we're going to have to watch as we go through the weekend, unfortunately. Uh, so I know Eric and I will be watching that. He'll have an update on Monday with the Ag Forecast video, and then I'll be able to talk again about this on Tuesday. Uh, because there's going to be, again, everything really hinges on... Is this thing really going to get cut off? And if it does, does it potentially get left behind here? Does it truly get picked back up by the Pacific Jet just 48 hours later? Or how long are we really going to be stuck with this thing keeping clouds, uh, cool conditions, and rainy potentially conditions across the region? So does it really lift back out that quick? Does it get kind of left behind by this, this trailing wave? That's something we're going to have to watch here because this cutoff look is a slightly new idea being introduced by the European model as of last night. Now, I've been talking a lot about much of the deep moisture being trapped uh, kind of along and south of the Gulf Coast by 
Uh, initially, a couple of big sweeping fronts that brought some cool dry air into the region a couple of weeks ago, but then uh, more recently, it's been our tropical systems down there, uh, and then most recently, Tropical Storm Beta, keeping much of the deeper Gulf moisture kind of wrapped around its circulation, not allowing it to advect northward and tap into some of these uh, sweeping fronts that have made, made its way through. Now, as we head through the weekend into early next week, we're finally going to start to see some of that deeper Gulf moisture being lifted northward from the Gulf of Mexico, especially as, again, potentially if this thing gets uh, kind of cut off, uh, and then we get it to sweep through here Wednesday into Thursday. Uh, this is looking at Wednesday afternoon right now from the, the European model. And again, you can see this fetch now, a very rich, deep Gulf moisture making its way all the way up to the Ohio River Valley. This would be the first time that that's happened, that we've seen this really good Gulf of Mexico uh, moisture transport uh, going back another one to two weeks or so. So something to watch here. It definitely looks like we'll be trending cloudy, cooler, and unsettled as we get into next week with some cooler temperatures making their way in uh, along with that upper level low. Now we'll see the moisture from beta making its way out of here as we get into the uh, the next 24 to 36 hours. It really should be much quieter as we get into uh, Saturday. So we'll take this through uh, the rest of our Friday watching those showers and a few thunderstorms making their way through the Carolinas into the Virginias. This would be 6 p.m. Friday evening. We'll take it into the overnight. This would be about midnight, 1 a.m. And then by the time we get to sunrise on Saturday morning, uh, just parts of maybe North Carolina into uh, the Virginias here picking up just an isolated shower or two. Uh, but much of the south should be quiet for the day on Saturday. Likely quiet for much of the day on Sunday as well. Just the chance for some scattered storms again across the southeast. Parts of the Florida Panhandle into southern Alabama and Georgia could see some scattered thunderstorms Sunday afternoon and evening as well. Checking out the severe weather risk off to the north. Again, a volatile environment in place across parts of northern Wisconsin and northeastern Minnesota as we head through today and tomorrow afternoon. Now we'll step back, we'll look at the European model, taking it a little bit deeper and watching the evolution of the, uh, the, the low next week. Here's the remnants of beta making their way through the Carolinas and the Virginias today into tomorrow morning. We'll see things quieting out across the south for our Saturday. Again, the chance for some scattered storms across the southeast Sunday afternoon and evening. The better chance for rain accompanies the front and the big upper level low that comes sweeping into the region on Monday. So starting Monday morning across eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas, down into uh, eastern Texas by Monday afternoon, and then moving into Louisiana, uh, Mississippi as we get into Monday evening, and then seeing that rain now starting to make its way into the remainder of the southeast as we get into the day on Tuesday. So pretty quiet as beta moves out until we get to Monday and Tuesday when we start to reintroduce that rain chance. Now again, as long as this cutoff low is just going to sit here and meander around, we're going to be dragging some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico up and around that circulation. So we'll keep unsettled, rainy, and cloudy conditions ongoing here as long as this low sits here. Right now, the European model kicking it out Thursday morning. So it would be kind of unsettled, cloudy, uh, with a chance for rain across the south uh, as we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday, unless we see some changes here with the timing with that upper level low. Otherwise, this would be cool, dry, uh, and again, chilly as we head into the end of next week. This is the European model, the operational run, just raw uh, precipitation totals here. Again, this does include some of that moisture from beta across this region, but looking at a good chance of at least a half an inch, if not a little bit more here, across much of, uh, again, eastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, on eastward across the remainder of the south. This is the probability of picking up a half an inch or more of rainfall between now and next Friday, October 2nd. And again, from eastern Oklahoma into far eastern Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and then eastward toward the Atlantic Ocean. That's where we've got that 60, 70, if not higher percent chance of getting that half an inch. I think across this region, uh, a pretty good chance of picking up one to two inches of rainfall as we head into mid to late next week. Could, could be breezy at times as we head into the back half of the weekend. Pretty calm winds across the south as we head through the first part of the weekend. It's not until we get to probably Sunday night, Monday and Tuesday, we can see some of those breezier winds making their way in with that upper level low as it comes crashing in. We'll look at those highs for the next few days. Again, cool on the backside of, uh, of beta here with clouds and, and moisture kind of lingering. A foggy, gloomy day for a lot of folks across eastern Texas into uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, in northern Alabama. We'll start to warm up as we head into the weekend with 80s becoming more commonplace, but the cool air moves in from west to east on Monday, spreading into the rest of the south on Tuesday, and then those highs on Wednesday uniformly in the low to mid 70s across just about everywhere except far west 
and South Texas. I hope you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you again on Monday morning. We'll diagnose some of the changes with that big shift in the upper level pattern and how long those rain chances are going to be sticking around in the south.